Okay. Take a look at this graph. What is the equation of this graph that you see in front of you? You got it. Y equals X. It's um, Y intercept is zero. It's slope is one. And now I'm going to push the home button to show you that what you were looking at was a zoomed in view of sine with its tangent line. Because when you zoom in on a particular point on a function, the graph looks like its tangent line. Now we have used tangent lines to approximate functions near the point of tangency. So if I wanted to approximate the sine of say, let's go with one fourth, because I'm looking at the fact that each of these is a half unit. Do you see that if one fourth is my input unit, that's probably a pretty good estimation, but I certainly would not use this line to estimate the sine of two. There's a bit of a gap. <laughs> so tangent lines are amazing because the calculations are simple. If you can imagine living in a time before computers, how difficult it must have been to calculate the values of sine. In fact, they had giant books of tables <laughs> where they had to literally look through and find the input number and then see what the sign was for that input number. Um, and it would be like about a four digit after the decimal point accuracy. But I don't even want to imagine before they made the tables. And think about the person who made the tables. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oof. Yeah. It takes a unique individual to sit down and make those tables without a four-function calculator, mind you. Think about it. <laughs> so lines are very useful, but they're only accurate for a short time. And, you know, it's actually not too hard to plug a number into a polynomial who's got a larger degree than degree one, like a line, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't be too bad to use a polynomial. So what I'm going to talk about is what is a tangent polynomial? And I want to show you. We're going to learn how to create this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to t equals 1. And this isn't going to go up just one degree. This is going to go up to a degree 3 tangent. Here it goes. And I want you to see how that approximation is better. For any x coordinate near zero, it's better, but it's also, it might be reasonable to use it at, for one, to calculate the sine of one. If I go back over to the line, I would, if I used x equals one on the line to approximate sine of one, I, I'm thinking that's not a good approximation, looking at that gap. But with this polynomial, it looks like it's probably a good approximation. Now, if a polynomial is tangent to, um, to a specific function, then it shares additional things that the tangent line doesn't share. Let's take a moment to think, what does the tangent line share with any function? And I'm going to, I've already got this written out to talk about it. If you're dealing with a tangent line, then, and I'm putting P of X to represent a polynomial approximation. 
this line that's in blue is a polynomial of degree one, meaning tangent line. And the function, where's my pen? There it is. The function value at a point of tangency is equal to the polynomial's value at that point of tangency. If you think about this line and I ask you what is the derivative of your line, you know it's the slope of the line, which happens to be f prime of a. So realize that when you have a tangent line, that tangent line's y value is equal to the function's y value. And that tangent line's slope at that point is the same as the slope of the function that it's trying to approximate at that point of tangency. So if I want to go further, I continue this pattern. And I make a polynomial where, what, why are you doing? Oh, I need my glove. I'm distracting my screen. So if I go further with this pattern, then I can take a second degree polynomial and find that its second derivative at x equals a must equal the function I'm trying to mimic's second derivative at a. Now, I was showing you the graph of sine. What is the sine of zero? Zero. Now, the first derivative of sine is cosine. What is the cosine of zero? And then take a moment to think that right there, that's giving you the line y equals x if you're dealing with a tangent line. If I want to find a second derivative, a tangent second derivative, then my second derivative of sine is negative sine. And tell me, what is the second derivative of that function at zero? It's zero. What that's actually telling me is there is no second degree polynomial tangent to sine at x equals zero because to be a second degree polynomial, it cannot have a zero value um, for, its, for its leading coefficient, which I haven't gotten to that issue yet. But basically, I can't create a second degree polynomial if I'm getting that it's zero. But I can do a third derivative. And what is the third derivative? And so that ends up giving me the third derivative of sine is negative 1. That means the polynomial's third derivative is negative 1. With that alone, with that alone, I can find a degree three polynomial. And I'm going to start talking about this tomorrow.
but through just those pieces of information, I can come up with a third, third degree polynomial that is the exact function that I'm showing you right here. Is, it, is that pretty cool? Now, how well do you think a polynomial can mimic sine? How well do you think a polynomial can mimic sine? Shall I push play? When I push play, it's going to go through the odd degree polynomials. So right now when t is one, I am at odd degree three. Next at t equals two, it's gonna be odd degree five. And let's just watch. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there. What? Can you believe that? Now, understand, we are getting this tangent polynomial off of simply and only information about the sine graph at zero. Everything is based on our knowledge of all the derivatives of sine, all the orders down for many, many, many derivatives at zero alone. And putting those in makes it follow the sine graph this closely. How amazing is that? That is um, just wow. Now, you remember that polynomials in the end go up or down. You remember doing the little arm movement things with polynomials? So no matter what degree polynomial I have, the end is going to suddenly and shockingly just rise to positive or negative infinity and is not good to use to approximate the sine graph any longer. But if I continue to add, um, to make a polynomial of larger and larger degree, this is going to continue to go further and further out. And I could literally have the sine function if I could get an infinite degree polynomial. I'll push play again. If I could get an infinite, think about what that means though, an infinite degree polynomial. <laughs> but if there was such a thing, then I could create the entire sine function off of an infinite degree polynomial. Now I've got another one for you. e to the x. Right now you see a tangent line to e to the x at x equals zero. And it's only a good approximation for a very short distance from horizontal distance from zero. Now, if I look at its tangent second degree polynomial, there it is, definitely better, but I would not stray too far from my center of zero. Let's keep going. I'll let it play. Hmm. Look at that. Isn't that cute? going all the way down slowly on the end. Does it look like it's doing a very, very extremely good job to the right of zero? But to the left of zero, I mean, it's trying to horizontally asymptote, come on. <laughs> so do you think that it's mimicking the function better on the right than it is on the left of zero? I'm now going to change our graphing perspective. I am going to flatten my y down by adding a bunch of zeros here. Not further. That should be enough. And then I just need to 
There we go. Okay, now take a good look. Interesting. You might even say it looks like it's a better approximation on the left if you go horizontally out and actually look at where those functions are. But look at how big the y values have to be to even see that because the problem is, I mean, just to get past 10, the graph is so far off the screen, you don't realize whether it's following it or not. You just assume it is. But it does reach the point of, you know, I am an exponential function and you're a polynomial. <laughs> you're a joke to me. If I continued to zoom out farther, you would eventually see the polynomial flatten compared to the exponential. So I want you to just kind of take a good look and just soak this in of how powerful this is though. How powerful it is that we can take a polynomial function do you think we can mimic any function we choose? Could there be any hindrances? Could there, is there something you can think of that a function could produce? Oh yeah, there's always an exception to a rule. Can you think of some kind of graphical issue where a polynomial just is like, I can't do that. Very good. That was quick, too. It can't mimic past a discontinuity. So one thing that is extremely important when we start coming up with these tangent polynomials is to know where they're good for. And the where they are good for is what the first half of the chapter preps you for. So the way I'm going to present the infinite series is by first letting you just see how they are mimicking functions and you're going to put in your own guesswork as to what you consider a good approximation. And there's no correct answer for what's a good approximation if I don't put it into some real world context. So you're just visually going to look at graphs where a polynomial is trying to mimic a function and say for what values of the function you think that it's being able to mimic. And then when we've really seen the power of a <laughs> power series, because that's what they're called, <laughs> um, then we will go back and look at the tests while we continue to think about what we have seen with these tangent polynomials and what we can and cannot do with them. And I found this to be a really um, exciting way to go through this chapter. I'm going to stop my recording.